Hi. A user on the Magix forum wanted to know how to do a zoom blur type of transition in Magix Movie Edit Pro. He wanted to zoom into a car window like this and then expand into the second clip. In this tutorial, I'll give you some tips on how to get started doing this type of transition. You should have an understanding of using the size and position effects, keyframing, and masks. If you don't, you can follow the instructions but you should brush up on what these effects do. It's best to start off with a photo or video filmed by a camera on a tripod. I have a photo of the car and the first step is to create a mask for the window. You can do this in a graphics program. I'm using Zara Designer Pro X but the same thing can be done in Zara Photo and Graphics Designer. I've adjusted the photo to exactly 1920 by 1080 in Zara to match my project resolution. I'll zoom in on the car window and select the shape tool. I'll create points around the window and when I close it to the first point I get a solid. If it's not white change it to white for the mask. Now I'm going to use a trick here. I want the mask to come into Movie Edit Pro at exactly the same location with respect to the photo. To do this create a rectangle 1920 wide by 1080 high make it black. Align this rectangle with a photo. Now move it to the back. Whoops! I did the alignment backwards so now the window mask is out of position so I'll just move it back into position. I don't need the photo anymore and I could delete it but instead I'll turn it off in the gallery. Now we have the white mask on a black background. The whole thing is a mask. To help see things better in Movie Edit Pro, I'll remove the solid part by making it transparent, but just keep a thin black line around the edges. This won't show up in Movie Edit Pro because the black will be transparent in the alpha mask. I'll select everything, go to File, Export as PNG, and give it a name and a path to where I want to store the file. Click on Settings, and make sure that Transparent is selected under Options. Now export. Now I can close Zara and open Movie Edit Pro. I already have my photo of the car and the second video on the timeline. I want the photo to be on screen for only five seconds so I'll trim it. There are easier ways to trim than I just did. I'll drag the mask onto track 3 so that we can see that the white part is exactly over the car window and we can see the car image because we made the black part of the mask transparent except for the border. I'll trim this to five seconds as well. I want the photo and the mask to zoom together so I'll group them by clicking on the group button. To make things somewhat smoother and as per some of the various effects that I've seen like this I'll start with a mild zoom in towards the window. Go under effects view animation, size position, and put a keyframe where the zoom will start, in this case at one second. I'll go along to four seconds where I want the zoom to really take off and set the zoom to 200. The mask follows along with the zoom because it's grouped with a photo. I'll center the car window by dragging it down. The mask jumps into place again because it's grouped with a photo and the effect is applied to both. I'll move the playback marker to the end of the photo and put in a very large zoom, 1400, by typing it in. I'll adjust the location because I want the center of the window to still be about centered on the screen and you can see that the upper part should not be shown. I'll type in the value since I've already figured this out beforehand, otherwise I would have to drag the image around to find the window and center it, which is what you'll have to do. Let's look at the result that's not too bad. Next step, bring the second clip down onto track 4 and move it to the beginning. We can't see the car or the mask anymore because I haven't given it the chroma key. Ungroup the photo from the mask as we don't need any more coordinated effects. Select the mask and go under video effects, chroma key, and give it a chroma key alpha. Note the direction of the arrow at the beginning of the mask. Now we see that the second video is seen inside of the masked area. However, it's at full size. For this effect, I want to start with the video zoomed out quite a bit. 
I'll use the position of the keyframes of the photo at one second as a guide to set the playback marker. Select the second video and add a keyframe for size position. I'll select the photo again, go to the four second keyframe, select the second video and add a keyframe. Go to the first keyframe of the video. I want this a lot smaller so I'll zoom out using the zoom slider and I'll set it to 27 which is slightly bigger than the car window. I'll drag the object in the preview monitor so that it fully covers the window mask and with the dog more or less in the middle. I'll move to the next keyframe and zoom out to about mm, 43 looks good. I'll move the position a bit to keep the dog centered. Let's see how this looks so far. Well, the dog jumps around a little bit too much. I'll adjust the position at four seconds a bit. Good. When we get to the end of the photo, we want the video to go back to full size, movie size that is, and centered. Now the camera moves in through the window and we're now in the second movie. That's our transition. Now we have the main components. The car starts zooming in, the second video appears in the car window, and then the camera zooms in quickly to the window and the second video takes over. To make this transition more effective, I want to add a blur effect to both the photo of the car and to the second video clip. You can use the artistic blur effect under sharpness, but that doesn't give the impression of moving in quickly. If you have VPX, it has a zoom blur effect. The best would probably be Pixel and Blur Bender Pro, which has many parameters that you can play with. If you have the Hit Film Tool Kit Pack plugin, then use the Hit Film Zoom Blur effect, and that's what I'll use. I want the blur on the car to start when the zoom speeds up at 4 seconds, so I'll go to that keyframe under animation by pressing on the Select Keyframe button, and then open the Hit Film Zoom Blur effect. For some reason, the default is 5. Change it to 0, or the image will start a bit blurry. I want to place a keyframe for strength, so I have to pop down the details and select strength and then click on the keyframe button. Now I'll move along a bit, not far, say 17 frames, and set the strength to 100 and press enter. Make sure that a keyframe shows up under strength. There's a bit of a problem with the size of the second video as we zoom in. The mask zooms in faster than the second video. I'll select the second video, go to size position, and move along the timeline. I'll adjust the size a bit to about 70. Let's check this. It's still going off a bit, so I'll move the keyframe for the zoom to 100 to be slightly earlier, and that should do it. Now I need to put the blur on this. I'll get the playback marker at the 4 second mark. Go to Zoom Blur Effect and apply the effect. Click on Strength. I want this at 0, not 5, or the video will still be a bit blurry from the start and set a keyframe. I'll move along a little bit and set strength to 100 and make sure the keyframe is there. Move along to maybe half a second or less after the transition end and set another keyframe with strength at 0. Thus the blur will finish a bit after the transition part. Let's check. Oops, it's still out a little bit at the upper right. But this happens quickly, so to see if it's important I'll render this up. Set a range and render the range. Done. There, not bad. It's a bit slow, so this would probably be better off with a half second transition instead of one second. Checking slowly, we can see the problem area. Right here the video should be a little bit bigger and up a bit. So maybe if I move the next keyframe back a bit, it'll work better. Now that's better. Not perfect, but better. I'll leave it like that. One last thing, I don't want to see the next video in the window right away, so I'll put a long fade on it. Now there's no image at the beginning and it slowly starts to appear. I'll render that up. As you've seen, doing a transition like this takes work. We made and used a chroma key alpha mask, we keyframed the zoom and position effects, and we keyframed the zoom blur effect. You can play around with the timing, the blurring, and the size and position to get the effect that you want. Each case will be different and will require trial and error adjustments. Of course, you can add other effects to enhance your transition. There you have it, a through-the-window zoom blur transition. 
and here's the speeded up version. I hope that this has helped you get started on making your own Zoom Blur transitions. Be original. Thank you for watching. Till next time, make movies. Thank you.